why do investors make the mistakes that they make? And you had mentioned things like drunk drawer investing. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Acting like an investor before you actually are one. Why do we make these mistakes? What causes <laughs> this? Well, I think it's because we listen to our hearts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, that, <laughs> our that's deceitful, worldly wicked wisdom, hearts. right? That's right. Just be you and, yeah. you know, listen to your heart and let your heart lead. Well, I would say, I would venture to say that listening to our hearts has led us into more bad places mm. than um, mm. we may be willing to admit. You know, the, the Bible says that our hearts are inevitably wicked. Mm. <laughs> so we, we have to be aware of that. We have to be careful about that. And we have to make sure that our hearts are lined up with what the Word of God says, because we can be sure that there is absolute truth, and that absolute truth is found in the Word of God. So... Mm. Um, Try to avoid being emotional about your investments. And, you know, when, when I say emotional, I don't think of, you know, uh, a woman crying or something like that. What I think <laughs> of being emotional is being led by either fear or greed. And we talk yeah. about that, you know, a lot. That's what drives the markets short term. So, you know, we don't want to be led by greed um, where we just, you know, grab onto any bit of advice that just sounds like it can, you know, make us a ton of money. We often hear so many investment stories just taken out of context. You know, the person that invested in Apple when it was, you know, first came onto the market and uh, Google and Amazon and, you know, all of those uh, big companies and we hear these big success stories. What we don't hear about or so often celebrated are the people who invested in things and lost all of their investment or, you know, who got overweighted in, in certain things, made, made a, a big bet on one particular idea that just sounded so good. So we don't want to be led by greed and we don't want to be led by fear either. You know, the, the parable of the, um, of the talents, the wicked servant said that his reason for burying his talent is because he was afraid. And so he was reprimanded by the master for that. So, you know, scripture tells us so many times, more than 365 times in the scripture says, do not be afraid. So we don't want to have fear of missing out. We don't want to have, you know, fear of loss because, and, and here's the key to it. When we really understand that everything is the Lord's, that we don't own anything. We're not deceived by um, the title on our, our bank account or on our mortgage statement or on our, um, our house deed or anything like that that says it belongs to us. When we really know that nothing belongs to us, that everything belongs to God, then we lose the fear of losing it. Because how do you lose something that doesn't belong to you in the first place? 